What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today we are talking all about the 3.5 EcoBoost found in the Ford F-150. Before we get started in the video though, I do want to let you know that TC Customs is giving away a free BDS lift kit for a 2021 Ford F-150. So if you have a 2021 F-150 and you want to lift it for free, uh, check out the links down below tccustoms.com forward slash giveaway and automatically enter your information. You're automatically entered to win that giveaway. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. Now I will tell you that we're going to break it out into different sections and you'll have those time cards listed down below and you can kind of see the different chapters. So feel free to utilize that, bounce around, kind of learn about, learn more a little bit about the, the engine. But the very first section I want to talk about is the generalities, the, the, the bare bones. If you don't understand engines, this is what you need to know about technology, the EcoBoost technology, is you get a V6 in this particular version. It's a V6. You have six cylinders three of V6, that's where they call it a, a V6, because you got six, six cylinders, but you get the V6 engine that is creating extra horsepower, something similar to like a V8 because of turbocharging technology. Turbocharging technology is very simple. It basically allows you to cram more air into the motor. And if you can cram more air into the motor, you can cram more fuel in the motor. And if you can do both of those at the same time, it creates a bigger explosion inside the motor. The bigger the explosion, the more horsepower you make. That's kind of what it boils down to. And as far as the um, EcoBoost technology, there's some other technologies we're gonna cover here in just a second that allows you to save fuel when you're not stepping on the throttle. Uh, so when you don't need the, the power, it's gonna get a little bit better gas mileage. When you need the power, it'll dump as much fuel as you will possibly need into that motor to make sure you have enough power. Speaking of power, let's talk about the horsepower and torque numbers. As you can see right there on the screen, you have 400 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque, and this motor is rated to tow up to 14,000 pounds Keep in mind all of that information is specifically for the 2021 model year. Things might change depending on when you're watching this video or if you're comparing a previous generation F-150. But I digress. Let's keep moving on into the rest of the technology. And let's talk about the port and direct fuel injection fuel system. Okay, so we're getting into the into the nitty gritty here. And so if I hope I don't lose anybody on this, but basically the EcoBoost version, this motor actually has two delivery types for the fuel. So the very first one that you have is a port fuel injection system, which basically allows you to have uh, a, a one injector in each one of the intake ports. In addition to that, you have direct fuel injection where you have a fuel injector in each one of the cylinders directly spraying fuel into the motor. So that way you can very finely control how much fuel is being put into the motor. Uh, so that way it's not being wasteful, but it also allows you to pour more fuel into the motor. So the fact that you've got both of these type of fuel systems dumping fuel in the motor, it allows you to dump more fuel, which means you can make more horsepower. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. When you're cruising, you'll get good gas mileage. When you step on it, it will absolutely <laughs> it will annihilate your fuel economy. Next up, let's talk about the cylinder block. This particular block is actually a die cast aluminum engine block, and it is strong and lightweight. Now, I do want to also talk about the crankshaft. It is actually a forged steel crankshaft, and it is fully counterweighted. And this is one of my favorite technologies inside of this motor is it has piston cooling jets. If you break it down, the name actually tells you what it is. There are jets that are cooling the piston, piston cooling jets. So underneath the motor, you actually have these jets that are spraying fuel to the underside of the cylinder. Now that does two different things. When you get in the car, when it's been sitting for 10 or 12 hours, the oil is cold. You don't want to hammer down on the, the motor right when the vehicle is still cold. And so what happens is those piston cooling jets moves that oil around and it causes that oil to get up to operating temperature a lot quicker. Now, the other benefit to that is when you're hammering down on your motor and everything is, I mean, you're, you basically everything is going, it creates a lot of heat. 
Well, those piston cooling jets are spraying on the underside of those pistons to cool them off to keep at a nice lower operating temperature, which is designed to hopefully make sure that the motor lasts a lot longer. It's designed for longevity. Next up, let's talk about the valve train. This particular engine has a dual overhead cam, DOHC setup. Now, it is a lightweight aluminum cylinder heads, and there are four valves for each cylinder. Now, keep in mind, this particular engine does have a hollow camshaft, and what that does is it reduces the overall weight of the valve train making everything much more efficient now i want you to realize this particular model model now i want you to realize this particular engine actually has what they call twin independent variable cam timing now what in the world does that mean so the camshafts can actually vary depending on what you're doing we talked about it earlier where the the fuel injection system can vary depending on what you're doing so can the camshaft so basically when you're cruising down the interstate the camshafts are in one specific position for better fuel economy when you step on it or when you're towing something heavy the camshafts will automatically vary and change towards the more power side of things so no matter what you've got fuel efficiency or the power depending on what you're doing let's talk about the intake and the exhaust and we'll start with the second one first let's talk about the exhaust manifold it is actually a cast manifold and it's designed for heavier duty application and it's designed for the durability now let's talk about the intake and that is going to be the intercooler setup so obviously you've got air coming in the motor the turbochargers create a lot of heat and heat does not produce much power. You want to keep everything nice and cool. So there's something that they call an intercooler, where the air that is going to go into the motor, it runs through an intercooler to cool off the air before it gets shoved in the motor. Cold air means a bigger explosion. Bigger explosion means more horsepower. Speaking of more horsepower, let's talk about these turbochargers that I am so excited to tell you about. Obviously, this is a twin turbo setup, meaning that we talk, you've got a V6 motor, so you have three cylinders on one side, three cylinders on the other side. You also happen to have one turbo on one side and one turbo on the other side. So the idea there is you want those turbochargers to be sitting as close to the motor as you possibly can to reduce turbo lag. Now, what is a turbo? What in the world is a turbo? What does it do? How does it do what it do? What it do what it do? Uh, <laughs> anyways, a turbocharger works like this. It takes the expense exhaust gases and it puts them into an impeller that impeller turns and it actually creates what we call boost and that boost is designed to take fresh air cram it together or compress it it is a compressor and then it takes it and shoves that air back into the motor it's a really wild use of technology if you're not used to seeing anything like this before but it is a good setup and a good technology now i've heard a lot of other people that have mentioned well i don't trust turbocharged motors because my so and so had a turbocharged car back in the day and man those, those turbochargers would coke up on you and you know basically the turbochargers wouldn't last even a hundred thousand miles well, Ford has found a way to avoid that. So these particular turbochargers are actually water-cooled. Now, specifically speaking, these are water-cooled bearing jackets. And the idea behind that is because it's water-cooled, you don't have to do any special precautions when you're driving the vehicle. So like in the olden days, you'd have a turbocharged car, you'd have to let it sit there and idle, let the motor cool down, and let the turbos cool down before you cut the car off because if the turbos cool down too quickly the oil that's inside of those turbochargers would coke up and then it would literally lock up your turbocharger well this setup is actually a water-cooled setup so even if you get through driving it as hard as you possibly can immediately pull over park it and cut the motor off this water-cooled system is going to consistently and constantly keep throwing water through these turbochargers to make sure that they slowly, slowly cool off instead of cooling off too fast. So it's really cool that Ford found that problem and fixed it before there was never an issue. Now these turbochargers are designed to be very, very small. And there's a couple of reasons for that because one, we're not trying to go for 1200 horsepower or 2000 horsepower. Uh, so they were able to make them a lot smaller. Now the benefit to having a smaller turbocharger means that they can spool up a lot faster, meaning that they can create boost or they can cram that air a lot faster. Why is that a benefit to you? Well, it's that seat of the pants feel when you step on the gas, from the time you step on that gas to the time you feel the acceleration, 
that is what turbo lag is. And because it's a smaller turbo, there's a lot less turbo lag going on. Now let's talk about the turbochargers themselves specifically. They are actually made out of a high temperature super alloy metal that was actually developed out of the aerospace industry. So uh, at least that's what Ford is telling me. <laughs> Anyways, um, the, the, the turbochargers have proven themselves to be overall a very very good setup because ford has really been pushing out this ecoboost technology since 2011. Well, actually i think 2010 is when they came out with it in the sho taurus that tells you how long this this technology has been around lastly let's talk about the deep sump oil pan now this does have a die cast aluminum deep sump oil pan and it is optimized for oil capacity meaning that you can actually drive up to one year or 10,000 miles on a single oil change and that's what ford is recommending now i'm such a weirdo i still would probably change my oil every 5,000 miles whether it needed it or not but that's overkill ford says you can actually do up to 10,000 mile oil change intervals and i have no reason to doubt them so there you go that is our video going into the weeds on the new 3.5 ecoboost engine found in the f-150 hope you enjoyed this video if you found anything useful entertaining any of that kind of stuff make sure you smash that thumbs up button i really really do appreciate it i do want to remind you one more time bds lift kit giveaway tccustoms.com forward slash giveaway to enter to win is totally free you don't have to buy anything just put your information in you're automatically registered to win that giveaway and if you haven't already done so hit some comments down below uh, also um if i missed anything or got anything factually wrong also include me down there i did my best to research it and make sure that i was giving you guys factual information but sometimes i am human and i do miss stuff so leave some comments roast me if i did a bad job but mainly make sure you smash that thumbs up button but don't forget subscribe to the youtube channel with that bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video peace